Welcome to another edition of Nutrition News. This week, we are going to interview a lesser known micronutrient, selenium. Welcome, Ms. Selenium. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here and to educate you and your audience about me. I'm a trace element that deserves more attention. Excellent. Let's start with an overview. When were you first discovered? Sure. I was discovered in 1817 by Johns Jacob Brasilius in Stockholm, Sweden at a factory. He thought I was the element tellurium, but eventually realized that I was an original, a new element. He noted that I was also like sulfur and indeed had properties between sulfur and tellurium. I'm a component of two amino acids, selenocysteine and selenomethionine. I was named after Selene, the Greek goddess of the moon, and I can exist in two forms, as a silvery metal or as a red powder. Did I mention I was important? I'm required for the function of selenoproteins, that is, selenium-dependent enzymes. And lastly, my abbreviation is SE, but please call me selenium. Could you tell us where you are found in the body? Yes, of course. I am typically found in proteins in the body as part of amino acids, and as I mentioned, selenocysteine and selenomethionine. Excellent. Can you tell us um, how you are absorbed in the body? I am efficiently absorbed throughout the small intestine, including the duodenum, jejunum, and elenium. Selenocysteine and selenomethionine are absorbed through amino acid transport systems. Selenate is absorbed by active sodium-dependent transport, primarily in the distal small intestine. Selenite absorption occurs by passive diffusion, primarily in the jejunum. Dietary selenate and selenite are absorbed into enterocytes. So are there any factors that influence absorption? Vitamin C, A, and E, and reduced glutathione in the intestinal lumen enhance absorption. Heavy metals and phytic acid are thought to inhibit absorption. Okay, so our body absorbs, and then where does it store you? The thyroid gland, kidneys, liver, heart, pancreas, and muscle contain pretty high concentrations. The lungs, brain, bones, and red blood cells also contain large quantities of the mineral. And how are you metabolized? Some forms are reduced to selenide via thyroidoxine reductase and glutathione. Other forms remain a mystery. And here's a process, or here's a picture of the known process. Okay, interesting. So how does the body regulate you and how it is stored and used throughout all of the cells of the body? The liver produces excretory selenium forms to regulate whole body selenium. The kidneys also assist responding to deficiency in excess via regulating excretion. And if someone is not getting enough of you, how does this affect the body? It'll lead to decreased activity of glutathione peroxidases, thyroid deodenases, and thyroidexin reductase. People will have an increased risk of deficiency if they are on total parenteal nutrition without selenium or have the following conditions, such as Crohn's disease, PKU, Cashin disease, or cashin beck disease. I have heard that you can be quite toxic, especially if intake exceeds 700 micrograms. What are your signs of toxicity? There are several signs you can watch out for. Brittleness and loss of hair and nails, garlic breath, digestive issues, skin rashes, irritability, fatigue, depression, and nervous system abnormalities. Okay, let's talk about ways to get adequate amounts through our food. Can you recommend some good sources? The recommended dietary allowance for adult males and females is 55 micrograms. For pregnant women, the amount is 60 micrograms, and for lactating women, 70 micrograms. There are many great sources, including Brazil nuts, organ meats, seafood, muscle meats, enriched grains, garlic, broccoli, onions, and wild leeks. Please note, however, that the concentration of meat in Brazil nuts in plant-based sources depends directly on the amount of meat in the soil. So, for example, Brazil nuts grown in Brazil may have as much as 100 micrograms per nut, versus 10 micrograms per nut when grown in the United States. Wow, so are there any nutrients that you have good or bad interactions with? I am a critical component of antioxidant enzymes and work well with copper, zinc, and iron, and also work with the antioxidant vitamins C and E to regenerate them and promote maximal antioxidant protection. When I'm not at optimal levels in the body, it may worsen the effects of vitamin E and iodine deficiencies. 
and high doses of omega-3 fatty acids can increase the need for me. And high doses of zinc and copper can include selenium deficiency in rats. What supplements are available and what do you recommend? Well, there's quite a few. Sodium selenite, sol sodium selenate, selenium methionine, selenium cysteine, selenium rich yeast, selenium aspartate. And the organic forms, noted with the asterisk here, are generally absorbed better than inorganic forms. It's best to take selenium supplements with meals and in divided doses. Okay, so what is the best way to test the selenium level? I would recommend near nail or hair selenium content. Concentrations in blood and urine uh, show the recent selenium intake. Analysis of hair or nail selenium content can be used to monitor long-term intakes over months or years. If you test for selenium via blood, the plasma or serum selenium concentrations of 8 micrograms or higher in healthy people typically meets the needs for selenoprotein synthesis. Great. So let's talk about how you are used to prevent or treat diseases. Do you have any favorite systems that you like to work to keep optimal? Oh, yes. I am very fond of the immune system and assist in keeping it functioning at optimal levels. Adequate amounts of me have shown to fight off viral infections, and in high doses, the incidence of cancer in animal studies has been reduced. There may be reduced risk of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, although more research is needed. The healthy thyroid gland stores high selenium concentrations even under conditions of inadequate selenium supply and releases many of the known selenocysteine-containing proteins such as glutathione pyridoxase diadenase and theodexin reductase families of enzymes. Adequate selenium nutrition supports efficient thyroid hormone synthesis and metabolism and protects the thyroid gland from damage by excessive iodide exposure. In areas where there is severe iodine and selenium deficiency, iodine supply has to be addressed first before beginning selenium supplementation in order to prevent hypothyroidism. As far as disease treatment, I am helpful in treating HIV, AIDS, and dandruff. Did you know that selenium is toxic to the scalp fungus that causes dandruff? Wow. Check your anti-dandruff shampoo. I'm probably in there. And of course, the value of selenium supplementation in autoimmune thyroid disorders has been studied and emphasized, unfortunately, with some debate still. Most attribute the effect of supplementation on the immune system to the regulation of the production of reactive oxygen species and their metabolites. In patients with Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's thyroiditis and in pregnant women with anti-TBO antibodies, selenium supplementation decreases antithyroid antibody levels and improves the ultrasound structure of the thyroid gland. Wow, that's a lot of information to take in. Fantastic. Yes, it is. You have definitely shown your importance. And I'll be sure to check the uh, ingredients in my dandruff shampoo. Well, Miss Selenium, we are coming up on time and must wrap up with this interview. Thank you for your time for providing references to additional information. You are welcome. Thank you.